When it comes to TV programmes, I'm usually very far behind. I discovered Happy Valley a few weeks after the final episode was broadcast, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine about a year after it had finished. So it's not really a surprise that I've only recently discovered the incredible programme The Good Place. Now, for those who have also had it completely pass them by, it's a show about life after death, with some people entering the afterlife and discovering what it's really like. It's not a Christian show, and the afterlife is quite different to what we might believe. But what makes the show so good is the amount of twists it contains, constantly challenging our perceptions. It takes the deeply discussed and debated topic of heaven and hell and who goes where, and then manages to surprise the audience and raise lots of questions. Our reading today also manages to surprise us with its view of heaven. It challenges us to think again about who God is and who God's people are. And a big surprise is how God is represented. We have a brilliant setup here, and I can imagine that if this was on TV, we'd be hearing footsteps approaching to build up our anticipation of who's about to enter. We're told that the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. And so we could imagine John looking to see this mighty lion on the throne and instead finding a lamb. And according to the specific word that John chose, a little lamb. And it is this little sacrificial lamb who is the only one able to open the scroll. The only one who they declare is worthy. On seeing the lamb on the throne, the natural instinct is for everyone to bow down and worship, including 24 human elders who represent God's people. I really like that there are 24 of them. I've seen many different theories about why that number, and I'm not sure exactly why 24. But what's important to me is that there are multiple elders there, we're not all represented by one person. We can't be. God created us to be a diverse people who worship them in different ways. And I like to think that the incense the elders offer represents the many different prayers from many different traditions which are all pleasing to God. I also love that the elders have an active role in this vision. When John is wondering how this scroll will be opened, it is an elder who tells him that the Lion of God has triumphed and can open the scroll. These elders are not bystanders. They are proclaiming God and ensuring that everyone knows the good news, particularly those who are weeping. The image of our human elders is one that we can aspire to. As Christians, we are called to an active role as followers of Christ, not just observers of Christ. And that means that this vision is not just something that we should look forward to. It's also something that we're actively working to bring about on earth as it is in heaven. And so the book of Revelation isn't just a guide to what will happen in the future. It's also a guide about how we should be behaving on earth. The 24 elders remind us that we shouldn't just be focused on our own relationship with God, but we should be caring about everyone getting there. Because God's plan is for us to be at their throne as a community, not as individuals. It can be tempting for us to think too much about ourselves and our personal relationship with God, perhaps just praying for what we want 
or using worship music which only speaks of I and me instead of us and we. But if we do this, we're missing out on a big part of what it means to be a Christian. In this passage, we heard that God is for persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. So we need to make sure that we have this more global view, recognizing that every individual belongs to God. Seeing this connection to one another reminds us that even if an event is happening the other side of the world, it is still important to us because it affects our siblings in Christ the very people that we want to be gathered with us around his throne. It's not just about getting there ourselves. It's about us all getting there and the joy that we shall feel in worshipping together. Anything that prevents us from having our place should be challenged. Any form of prejudice which stops some voices being heard. The persecution of believers which denies people the right to worship. The devastation of war which causes lasting trauma. All of these things make life and faith more difficult. And so some people have a more difficult time. And it requires the action of us all to make sure that we are modelling this vision of the elders gathered together in all that we do on earth. In the past, Christians have got this idea of the elders very wrong, seeing each elder as a carbon copy of one another, or worshipping in the same way. And so it's caused this idea that means we need to go out and convert people to our way of life, our way of worshipping God, so that we are all the same. It was based on the idea that some people are better than others, and so missionaries would not just talk about Christianity, but also had the aim of civilizing people. But God is calling us to an approach where each person's culture is valued. Each elder is there at the throne, where each person's prayers are an incense to God. Perhaps the problem here is that we have been too keen to see God as the lion, the strong and powerful one. And so we believe that we as believers need to be strong. We might equate victory in war with God being on our side, or believe that as Christians we should be powerful because our Father is God. Weakness might even become equated with doubting. But Jesus is seen in this passage as the sacrificial little lamb. Jesus became the weakest of all. We shouldn't disregard the importance of humility and sacrifice and putting others above ourselves. It was only through the sacrifice of Jesus that this vision could be realized. The powerful lion could not tear open the scroll through force. It could only be done through the sacrifice of the lamb. The weakness of the lamb became the greatest strength in defeating death and evil. Seeing God as the lamb on the throne challenges us to think about what values are important to us on earth. We live in a world which values strength, where nations are pitted against each other while people are oppressed. And then we wonder why we cannot have lasting peace and justice. This passage reminds us that these displays of might are only fleeting. The true strength is the courage to honour other people, to be ready to learn from one another, and to respect each and every person as our equal around God's throne. However much the world tells us to be a lion, we must look towards that little lamb on the throne.